This is an ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. What a great event the Champions Classic is. This is the nightcap after Michigan State beats Duke at Cameron. Now from Indianapolis. Again, COVID, no fans at Bankers Life Fieldhouse, but it's still going to be a great game between two very good teams. Kentucky, they're coming off a loss to Richmond over the weekend. Kansas is 1-1. One one. They gave up 102 points in a loss against Gonzaga. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman here in Charlotte. Dick Vitale in Sarasota. Holly Rowe in Indianapolis. We'll bring in Holly shortly. Obviously, Dick, nothing is as it normally is. There's a lot going on right now, but college basketball is out of the gate, and we're happy to have games. Well, there's no doubt about it. We're happy to have basketball, Dan. You know, COVID-19's caused a lot of problems in the sports world, but most of all, it's caused problems in the game of life. People losing their lives, people losing their jobs. So we'll make the most of it. I know one thing. We got basketball tonight. Forget there's no fans. I'm excited we got hoops. And we got, as you said earlier, are you talking about blue bloods, Hall of Fame coaches? I'm getting goosebumps, Dan. I'm getting goosebumps. Kansas, Kentucky, baby. Let's start with the Jayhawks. And of course, like a lot of programs, they have lost some very important players from last year. In all likelihood, Kansas would have been the number one overall seed going into the NCAA tournament a year ago, but two great players are gone. And Devon Dotson and Yudoka Azubuki, they do bring back some very important players, including Ochai Abaji, Marcus Garrett, David McCormick, newcomers, a freshman, Bryce Thompson, and Tyon Grant Foster comes from the junior college ranks. Dickie B, what do you think about the Jayhawks? Well, the Jayhawks are getting better and better as they get more experience with each other, playing together. When you talk about the Kip Brown, he's certainly been great out of the gate. Obagi's been terrific. they got to get Marcus Garrett going. He's the best defensive player in the nation I ever saw last year. I mean, last year he was terrific. He's got to give him that kind of basketball. He's been a little bit under the weather. I'll tell you one thing, it was really exciting watching him play last year. All right, now let's talk Kentucky. And even by Kentucky standards, Dick, they have lost a lot. All five starters from last year are gone. All of them are now playing professionally. They also lost some key reserves. They only bring back one scholarship player from last year, but they do bring in, as always, a great freshman class, including a couple of top ten recruits in Boston and Clark, and just as importantly, three experienced players, three transfers, led by Olivier Saar from Wake Forest, are now Kentucky Wildcats. Lost to Richmond, a very good Richmond team on the weekend. What do you see in Kentucky so far? Tell you one thing, Dan, nobody's going to cry for John Calipari losing some players. I mean, he just loads up with more McDonald's All-Americans. You know, Boston and certainly Clark have potential to be lottery selections. they got to make shots. They did not pass the ball well against Richmond. Had zero assists in the second half. Richmond dominated in the second half because there was no ball movement. And they got to make some shots. They're 0 for 10, shooting a 3. they got to find guys that can make that open 3. You're not going to win today in college basketball without having somebody can make the 3s. As we mentioned, Holly Rose, she is our eyes and ears tonight. She is in Indianapolis. Hello, Holly. Hey there, guys. Well, there was some concern leading into this game today because both teams' opponents over the weekend, both St. Joe's for Kansas on Friday and Richmond for Kentucky on Saturday, have now suspended team activities after some positive COVID tests. But there has been testing and, more importantly, contact tracing. This connects on safe tag that the teams are wearing can tell you if you get too close. You see how it lights up? If I'm too close to you, my red button lights up, and then they can contact trace through a data program. This is important because it is sewn right into the jerseys of the players so they can measure time and duration of how long players are next to each other so they're able to tell whether a player's infected if he was too close to another for a long period of time. Next level technology sewn right into the jerseys, both teams wearing it tonight and hopefully it will make everyone safer during this very unusual season. All right, Holly, uh, a great story. That is the ultimate goal during these uh, these times here in 2020 to try to keep everybody as safe as possible. We are now ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. It is Kentucky in white and Kansas in blue. Patrick Adams, Doug Sermons, Jamie Lucky are the officials and they are underway in Indianapolis with Marcus Garrett at the point. And Garrett's been battling 
an illness the last couple of days, has been tested repeatedly for COVID. That's come back negative, but he's had some stomach issues, Dick, and some fatigue and a bit of a fever, we understand. We didn't think he was going to play, but he is in there starting for the Jayhawks tonight. Well, you know, Dan, I spoke to uh, Bill Self earlier today, and he really said the kid was under the weather. He was having a tough time breathing in their last game and did not play well. Only had five points and not defending like he's capable of defending. He is one of the best, maybe the best defensive player in the country, the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year nationally last year, and a guy that Bill Self just loves. With no Devon Dotson, Garrett really becomes the primary point guard, although he actually led the Big 12 in assists last year. Now we've got an offensive foul away from the ball, turning it over to Kentucky, and let's introduce you to some new faces. Olivier Saar, the transfer from Wake Forest. He's got just this year of eligibility. The other four guys are freshmen and all ranked as top 35 recruits coming into Lexington. They just reload every year, man. They just got it going. John is a recruiting machine. He's got a great program to sell, and he sells it in a very big time way. It's amazing. Do you realize this? Since 2000, it's a, the last 11 years, he's had two NBA first rounders drafted or more every year. That's unbelievable. It is. 31 first round picks overall in 11 years. The lob over the top for Abachi. They can't connect. And back comes Devin Askew. Kentucky will look to push when they can. One of the issues for them in the early going, and again, it's very early, outside shooting. Boston misses a three, or Clark, rather, misses a three right there. Dick, they didn't make a single three-pointer Sunday against Richmond. And the reason, because they didn't really move the basketball. you got to move the ball. See, one of the problems Kansas is going to face playing without Azabuke. He was so valuable closing that lane up protect the rim he protected the paint and he scored on the interior terrence clark 6-7 out of boston a very creative perimeter guy can do a lot of different things you can see the handle the floater won't go down and coming out of there with the rebound is jalen wilson yeah, Clark's Kansas, a very number first. 10. garrett with a runner and nobody's been able to break the ice so far dickie b well, you know, a little bit right now, tension. Kid that's going to be a good player, I really believe, Dan, is the kid Jackson. I think Jackson did not get the notoriety some of the other recruits got, but they tell me he's going to be a double-double guy on a regular basis. Yeah, he is a gazelle, 6'10". You don't have to run plays for him. Great shot blocker, gets down the floor in transition, and he'll get his without being a focal point of the offense. Garrett over the top, the pass deflected away, and back comes Kentucky. This is Brandon Boston Jr. out of North Cross, Georgia. Off to Askew. He misses the three. And a great box out there by McCormick, allowing Christian Brown to come up with a rebound. And how about the game that Brown had against St. Joe's last time out? Six threes, and he scored 30 points. Yeah, he's a really versatile player. He's more than just a shooter, Dad. He's a guy that can do many things for that. Handles the ball fairly well. He's aggressive defensively. A turnover by Boston. Numbers for KU. Brown gets a look. And finally, somebody scores as the weak side putback is good for Ochai Abaji, who's off to a great start this year. 17 and a half points per game through the first two games of the season for the Jayhawks. Well, you know, Abaji showed a lot of potential last year, but he was inconsistent. Drive and a runner left short by Boston and Kentucky still scoreless as the Jayhawks come back almost three minutes in. That was a bad shot right there. Shot selection is a big thing for young kids coming out of high school. You know, you can get away with that in high school, but you're not going to get away with it here. Jalen Wilson misses the three. He's a guy well, one thing with no. Michigan. Yep. With no fans in the stands, you can hear both coaches, especially Calipari, yelling out instructions to their team. Boy, and Kentucky's troubles from beyond the arc continue. They do have the ability, though, to be a great rebounding team. We see it there, and Clark gets the Wildcats on the board. Well, Clark shows that versatility he possesses. You know, they out-rebounded Richmond by 23. That's the first time in the history of basketball at Kentucky ever lost the game when they out-rebounded a team by 20 rebounds. Abaji knocks down a three. He's got all five in the early going for KU. Sar, nice little shuttle pass, and the slam is good for Isaiah Jackson. 
That's a look at Jackson right there going down the gun of the defense. Tremendous pass by Czar. He was one of the most wanted transfers. There's the double team. See, he recognized he was doubled up. See the experience right there. He was doubled up and left the lane to the goal. Up, up, and away, Mr. Jackson. They're going to love him in Big Blue Nation. And he'll head to the line trying to convert the three-point play and tie the game, which he will do. Kentucky also a little bit sluggish out of the gate this year from the free throw line, just 62% as a team through their first two games. Well, they missed 13. They missed yep. 13 free throws against Richmond. Richmond, a very good team, well coached by Chris Mooney. Play of that game was that kid Gilliard with that steal. Yep. A steal and a lay-in for Davion Mins, a grad transfer from Creighton, and Kentucky has the lead. John felt he didn't play him enough minutes in a Richmond game, Dan. Game you did. Garrett looking for help, finds Abaji, misses the three. Jackson keeps it alive, and here comes Askew. Oh, good defense by Garrett, and he forces the turnover to take us to the first media timeout of the night. A two-point lead for Kentucky and Kansas. We'll play a little game of Don't I Know You when we come back out of this timeout. Now, Bill Self and John Calipari know each other well, and they have met for the national championship not once, but twice over the years as we take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. Coaches to face each other more than once in a national championship game. It has happened a few times, but not all that many. And Self and Calipari are on the list. Fog Allen, Branch McCracken. McCracken winning both, one in 1940, one in 1953. Ed Jucker and Fred Taylor back-to-back -back years in 1961 and 1962. And then John Calipari and Bill Self. Coach Cal was with Memphis in 08 when Kansas won. And then Calipari was with Kentucky in 2012 when the Wildcats beat the Jayhawks with that extraordinary team, Dick, led by Anthony Davis. I'll tell you one thing, John will tell you, he should never let Chambers shoot that three, baby. Shoot that three. <laughs> that hurt him big time. Yeah, Chambers hit that three. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Holly Rowe. Game two of the Champions Classic between Kansas and Kentucky. Kentucky bench wanted to travel there on Jalen Wilson, but they don't get the call. Mitch Lightfoot has come into the game for the first time for Kansas, a fifth-year senior. He redshirted last year because they had so much depth up front. Little runner around and out for Garrett. Battle for the rebound. Jayhawks get it back. And a rejection by Jackson, I believe, and it'll be Kentucky ball. Tremendous play defensively. Jackson did a great job defensively, number 23, with that block shot. He's going to be a special player. He really is. He's an elite athlete. Watch him rotate over. Here he is right there. Great timing. I'm telling you, I like his toughness. Yeah. He's got a little toughness about him. 6'10", like, great leaping ability. Can't teach Cameron that, Cameron Fletcher is into the game for the first time now. 6'6", freshman out of St. Louis. Number 21 for Kentucky, a guy who plays extremely hard and can guard just about any spot on the floor. Sar working hard on the block, gets back the miss, and finishes. They know Zarr, think about this, Dan. Last year he had 35 and 20 against Notre Dame. He had 25 against Duke. Mike Krzyzewski said he's going to be an impact player for Kentucky. Third team all ACC transferred after the coaching change at Wake Forest. 7-0 run right now for the Wildcats. Drive and Wilson has the shot altered and the length of Kentucky is bothering Kansas on the inside right now. They really try to get that three to go down. They haven't made one yet. A good save there by Bryce Thompson, a, a freshman, the most highly touted freshman on the Kansas roster. And uh, now Fletcher gets caught in the air, and he fouls Wilson. Let's bring in Holly Rowe. 
Well, you guys talked about the length of Kentucky possibly bothering Kansas, and there's a for good reason. Right now, Ken Palm lists them as the number one team in America for height used in games. Look at these wingspans. Sar is 7'3 seven, and a half, seven, two and a half for Jackson, who's been very active around the rim. You just try getting it in in these passing lanes when their hands are active and they're playing defense like they can. This could be a very hard team to score on. Absolutely. You know how it should be a, a great defensive team by the end of the season, don't you think, Dick? Yeah, no doubt about it. But I think sometimes I look at that team, I think they could be a great zone team. I think in a zone with that wingspan, making it difficult to find passing lanes, I think they'd be very effective. I don't say use it all the time, but I think John should start thinking a little bit about his zone. Christian Brown was found, and he heads to the line for the Jayhawks. This is a guy that Bill Self just loves. He is a sophomore out of Burlington, Kansas. And was not a, you know, a huge big-time recruit, but he brings toughness. He brings shooting ability. And his role, his minute stick, it's going up and up and up right now for Christian Brown. Well, they're going to be really big-time. You know, talking to Bill today, he was very proud of the fact that they broke a record this week. 222 times Kansas has been rated weekly, breaking the record by John Woody at UCLA of 221. That's unbelievable. Talk about consistency. Yeah, it goes back into the 2008-9 season, the last time that Kansas was unranked. 222 consecutive weeks in the top 25. And also, and they Dan, are... they, lead the, they lead the nation with 30 consecutive NCAA bits. Kansas ranked 7 right now. Kentucky, in the opening week of the season, they were ranked 10th, but after the loss to the Richmond Spiders Sunday at a rough, they dropped down to 20. The number one team in the nation right now, according to the rankings, rankings the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and they'll be part of the Jimmy V Classic tomorrow night. You can see both of those games here on ESPN. Should be two really good games. You know, Dan, I have a little problem with rankings. I think rankings early in the season are ridiculous. I think we should not rank teams until January 1st. Let's start rankings then when you get a true evaluation on these clubs. It's a feeling out process right now. But then guys like me can't say, hey, look, number one's playing tomorrow night, and number two's yeah. playing tomorrow night. I knew you were going to come back with that. I knew it. <laughs> I can read you like a book. <laughs> Even from like 600 like miles away, huh? Yeah. Mintz drives and is fouled. I think Thompson's going to get called for the foul, and Davion Mintz will head to the free throw line for Kentucky. We talked about these transfers. We've seen Olivier Saar. Davion Mintz, also Jacob Toppin, who is the younger brother of Obi Toppin, the former Dayton Flyers star, and uh, now off to the NBA. But just a little bit of experience. These three guys coming in as transfers to try to guide these freshmen a little bit. Yeah, I think Top Toppin's going to be a player. It's going to take a little time. But like his brother, he could be a guy that gets better and better and better. As you take a look right here, this kid out of Creighton, by the way, Creighton has got one heck of a team. Great player by the name of Marcus Zagorowski. Terrific talent. Mintz did not play at all last year because of injuries. Was the starter the two years prior to that. Follows up the miss on the free throw. He got the offensive rebound. And Brandon Boston Jr. gets the dunk. And Bill Self has seen enough. Six-point lead for the Wildcats, 7-10 into the first half in Indianapolis. One more look. Mintz getting the rebound. Kentucky Wildcats and the Kansas Jayhawks making their way to Bankers Life Fieldhouse to play this game. Of course, Michigan State played at Duke. First time the two games of the champions have been split, but everything is different this year, right? And the Champions Classic is no different. But we still have Kansas. We still have Kentucky. We still have Dick Vitale. And that means we're still having huh. fun, right? I'll tell you one thing, Dan. You know, Michigan State was impressive. They were down 10 early in that game and really got great team play, as Jay Miller said, in terms of guys really playing well together. And that was big for them. They got good play out of the kid Watts and out of Henry. And the kid off the bench, Marble, was a real good, solid player for them. That was a good win for them. Kentucky forces a turnover. Cameron Fletcher thought about the three. Mintz will take it and miss it. And Kentucky still looking to knock one down from beyond the arc. It has been a while. 
It's been like about well, seven hours. Listen, ho- listen to all the yelling and hollering you can hear, Dick, because there are no fans in the stands. The coaches, the assistant coaches, the players themselves. Boston with the drive. Off the glass and good. A nice runner by Brandon Boston Jr., who's out to a great start tonight. Well, you can see why people love Boston and love Clark. You can see their athleticism. You can see their versatility, multi-dimensional, handle the ball well. They got to do a better job of shooting the basketball because they were able to dominate kids on a scholastic level, and now they got to do a better job shooting. And they will. They will. A spin in the lane by Jalen Wilson can't finish, and it's off David McCormick out of bounds. Back to Kentucky. To the under 12 media timeout. Kansas really struggling to put the ball in the basket, and Kentucky. Kentucky slowly but surely they keep stretching out that lead. A couple of recent buckets for their top ranked wow. freshman, Brandon Boston Jr. Wow. Can't teach that kind of ability, Mr. Schumann. You better go and get that unbelievable chance. A hundred bucks. Just go to DickVital.com right now because I'm telling you, within a week, we're going to sell off 1500 out, Mr. Schumann. So you get you know, your ticket. No, no, you can't get it in Canada. Can't get I it can't in get Canada. can't get it in Canada. I'm ineligible. So you can't spend a hundred. <laughs> Give me you a know, check as anyway. Is the case, as is the case with everything during the pandemic, you know, those in need are even more in need. And I want to tell people that the gala that you have down in Sarasota, it had to be moved from May to September, and it had to be done virtually like everything else but you pulled it off beautifully how much money was raised at the gala in september 7.4 million dollars and all i could simply say thank you thank you mr pentecost his wife cindy gives two million mark cuban with five hundred thousand. and i'll tell you this wwe i can't say enough to stephanie mcmahon nine hundred thousand all for kids in research Stepping in and taking the foul right there is Dewan Harris, a redshirt freshman out of Columbia, Missouri. He did not play for the Jayhawks last year, had to get his academics in order, so he redshirted. He did practice with them second semester. And with Devon Dotson gone, Marcus Garrett, as we mentioned, he now becomes really the the main point guard for Kansas. But Harris is going to get some minutes as his backup there. Yeah, he's a true point guard. You know, Garrett's really not a true point guard. I think there's one thing with Garrett, and I really thought this, I discussed it with Bill Self. You know, he was a tremendous defensive player. There's no question he was the best defensive player in the nation last year on the perimeter. But right now, with the responsibility of playing the point guard slot, i got to believe mentally that takes a little bit away. And thinking about i got to be the facilitator, get everybody involved. I think when you look at Harris, he came in a game. They were struggling a little bit against St. Joe's, and he had a great game. He's a penetrator. He's tough at the basketball. He gets to open people. I think he's going to be a big plus. Meanwhile, Kansas just keeps turning it over. Kentucky's out to a 12-point lead, and Bill Self's going to use another timeout. They're two for 14 with eight turnovers. And the Wildcats are taking advantage. Turning the ball over, getting layups and dunks at the other end. Look at how easily that one was for Mins. He goes coast to coast and slams it in, and Bill Self just try to find somebody who can do something at the offensive end right now. You know, really play right in the hands of Kentucky because if they're going to excel, they're going to excel in transition with their athleticism. Right now, they're not really a good shooting team from the perimeter. We've seen that. But, you know, you look at Bill Self, that life in the Big 12 is going to be tough. There's some quality mm-hmm. teams in that league this year. Tomorrow we'll see West Virginia. you got Texas Tech. you got teams out there with the team called Baylor, too. They're not bad. You're not going to see them tomorrow. Not against yeah, a see good them Illinois against team. Illinois. Yep. Hey, we mentioned it's V-Week, and we'll have the second game of the 19th annual Women's Jimmy V Classic Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number 5, Louisville, and number 20, DePaul, in Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Bubbleville has been hosting wow. so many games uh, in that controlled environment, and for the most part, they've been able to get all the games in. A lot of teams going there just to try to get some games. You know, we've got teams like, we mentioned Richmond beating Kentucky. They have had a positive case in their program. They are shut down right now. St. Joe's played Kansas down in Fort Myers. They have had a positive test in their program. They are on pause right now as well. 
Tell you one thing, lacking for Kansas this year is going to be interior scoring. And that's what I'm going to miss as a Luke down in that box. Everything's yeah. going to have to come to the wings to drive in and shoot some threes. Well, and Dick, they've got five perimeter guys in the game right now. They do not have, never mind a big guy, they don't even have a real forward. They've got five perimeter players. Look at them, five out, nobody near the paint right now. They played five, they played five guards against St. Joe's, and it really worked very effectively. They were very efficient with it. And Kentucky, a team that doesn't have a lot of post offense, and their biggest guy, Saar, is not in the game right now. Boston with a drive, knocked away by Brown, and here come the Jayhawks, desperately looking for a bucket. Garrett with a crossover, up and in, and he becomes the first Jayhawk other than Ochai Abaji to score in this game. Well, really, the kid is playing under the weather. He's really struggling with the situation right there. Good defensive anticipation. Yep, the steal for Harris, the slam for Garrett, who is playing under the weather. And now John Calipari doesn't like what he's seeing. Harris made a All nice of a sudden, right Dick, there, a little man. spark there for the Jayhawks. Yeah, Harris gave him a little spark there with that steal. Hey, Dan, you know one thing I figured out? What I really miss, Dan? I tell you what I miss, Dan. I miss hitting you with my elbow left and right when you get in. You're <laughs> no, so fun. My, you, you my right so shoulder's bruises. never felt so good. <laughs> a look at the last couple of buckets. Yeah. And there's Garrett. We mentioned under the weather, some sort of a stomach ailment. They've tested him repeatedly. They don't think it is COVID. He has tested negative. And boy, do they need Marcus Garrett, one of the best players in the country. Let's bring in Holly Rowe. Well, guys, like you said, he's been under the weather, and you've got to love how he's fighting through that. He did practice yesterday, and he looked pretty good at practice, but he's really not feeling well. I talked to him as he walked off the court today, like, are you okay? And he gave a thumbs up. He really wanted to play in this game, and uh, he's fighting through it. You can just look at his face. Look at him on the bench. He's trying to catch his breath. He's having some stomach issues, and they just haven't been able to diagnose what's wrong with him. Hmm. But, man, this young man has a lot of pride to try to play tonight. Really is very courageous, uh, just like you are, being out there like you are. Holly, doing a great job. You're so good on that sideline. It's amazing. Yeah, Holly is there in Indianapolis, was at practices yesterday and today. If you're just joining us, a lot of distancing and a lot of safety measures. Dick is in his home down in Florida. I'm with you from an ESPN studio in Charlotte. That's how we're bringing you the game. Hey, one thing was really better. for Kentucky. Go ahead, Dick. One, one thing that was better here today than in the past, you know, go to the post uh, uh, room in terms of getting with the media, having your pregame meal. I had my pregame meal right down the road here in my kitchen, and it was really a lot better than you get that. And touching down to Kentucky, they give me potato chips and maybe a hot dog. <laughs> that was the second foul on Bryce Thompson of Kansas. Baseline jumper is good for Olivier Saar. He can shoot the ball now. He can step out. He's like finesse, but they want to be more power and go inside. He was a great pickup from Wake Forest. They really did a... I thought the NCAA did a great job making him eligible as well. So I personally feel that any time a coaching change takes place, those kids that came with that coach should be allowed to go and move on. White Czar right now is going to screen, step away from the screen, catch the ball, square his body really well, good release, good touch. John Calipari raves about him, his work ethic, his attitude. Yeah, they I'd really rave about needed to get somebody to play. The, <laughs> they really needed somebody to play at the five spot. They were very fortunate to get him as a transfer. Ask you off to Boston. Sar at the elbow, trying to back down. McCormick slips around him, left hand up and in. See, that's what he's got to do more of. He's capable of doing that. He's got to show that he can go down in that box and be a little more physical, more aggressive offensively. Want the ball. you got to want the ball. Christian Brown wants the ball, but he is met at the rim by Saar, who came up with a block in the back. Come the Wildcats. Boy, their length is something else. Askew turns it over. Four blocks already in this game, Dickie V, for, Kent, for Kentucky. You know, Dan, talking about their length, as Holly pointed out, it brought to me thinking about the zone of Syracuse, that 2-3 zone with their length. They, when they had those great teams, when they had the Carmelo Anthony team that won the national title, Warwick and that gang, I think that if he used that occasionally, he would find out it would be a great plus for Kentucky. I tell you what, why don't you set up a Zoom call with Calipari and you tell him that, but I want to be on the call when you tell him he should play zone. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a lot, play a little bit. 
<laughs> Three no good for Bryce Thompson. We're headed to the under eight media timeout. Kansas with just nine points in better than 12 minutes. Well, there's no doubt about it. You know, talk about the sumo. He's just as special as can be. I'll tell you one thing. Like Butler's pretty good, too. The kid from Baylor. There's no yep. doubt about him. And Col Colburn, I mean, think about it. How many guys are you going to find at his size? 6'11", 297, run the court the way he does, really becoming a polished player. This could be a special Illinois team. I talked to Coach Underwood, and he couldn't say enough about the potential of his team. Should be an unbelievable game between Illinois and Baylor. Holly Rose got more. Well, guys, Scott Drew, who had been out and away from his team for their last several weeks because of a COVID positive test, has actually joined the team here in Indianapolis. I saw some pictures on social media. Coach Drew able to rejoin them in the hotel last night, and I know he'll be excited to be back with his team, although their assistant, Jerome Tang, did a great job in his absence. But Baylor will be whole, and Coach Drew can't wait to get back. Even Brad Underwood from Illinois can't wait to see Coach Drew coaching. Those are longtime buddies from the BATCOM back in the day and Big 12 foes as well. You know, Holly, I spoke to him yesterday, and he was so excited about coming back. And I'll tell you one thing, nobody in America could put together, Dan, the five guards he has. He has five big-time guards. Mm -hmm. We know about certainly Butler, there's Mitchell, and I'll tell you, Teague, and he's got guys off the bench as well who can really flat-out play. That's a special team. Yeah, Adam Flagler's off to a great start. Makes the three. Uh, a nice little jump hook there by David McCormick, a former McDonald's All-American and a guy who wound up as a backup to Yudoka Azubuki last year. But they need some big minutes out of him at the five spot this year, Dick. Yeah, you're right, Dan. That's a key player. I'm glad you brought that up. This kid, by the way, can shoot the ball. You just got to get open a little bit more, find the open shot. Ask him can shoot the basketball. Let me tell you this. There's no doubt about it. When you talk about McCormick, he's a key player. He's got to give him some point production down on the interior. We're going to take a McCormick down here in the post. He's going to go in there a little bit more. He's got to go in there and want the ball a little bit. Because if he can have a little kind of score in there, it gives him much space to the other players on the perimeter. The handoff to Garrett. Garrett inside, up and in. And Marcus Garrett starting to assert himself offensively the last few minutes for the Jayhawks. He's one of my favorite players in college basketball. Plays hard all the time. Plays within the team concept. And he's an All-American player. There's no doubt about it. He's coming struggling a little bit because of the health situation, as Holly talked about it. But once he gets healthy, he's going to be dynamite. Lance Ware, corner pass. And Dante Allen will knock down a shot. A red shirt under three, I show. who didn't, yeah, didn't, didn't play at all last year, right? As a high school senior. Scored over 40 points per game, but suffered a knee injury and they didn't play at all last year. But he's a guy who can really knock down shots. Yeah, he can make shots. In fact, John told me that yesterday in the NFL. He's one guy that can make points, put points on him. He's had so many injuries. So you got to root for a guy like this, just like got to root for the kid Langford playing for Michigan State after missing a couple years. That's a three ball. That's a, That's three, a three ball. ball. They made a three. They made a three, Dan. <laughs> they made a three. Oh, wow. I'm going to celebrate. Oh, hey, Lorraine. Lorraine, give me some meat in that kitchen. <laughs> Dick. Let's Go get, get it close yourself to half at halftime. Go get I know, it yourself. I'm trying, to tell it. I'm trying to get yeah. the pizza ready at halftime, Lorraine. Yeah. <laughs> That's the value of being at home. Yeah. You got to be yourself. <laughs> you are. You are. Too, you are too much. <laughs> Making the best of the situation, right? We can't rub elbows at courtside like we normally do, but making the best of it, right? But rub I'm elbows. <laughs> Which one? The other side? Other side? There you go. <laughs> I'm so Left proud of you, right, though, buddy. Down. That award. Wait, wait. we got to talk about your award. Your Hall of Fame award from out of Canada, the Canadian Hall of Fame Museum Award. That's special, man. Thank I'm you. proud of you. Thank you. It's from the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. I, I yeah. appreciate it. The Jack Graney Award. You did some reading up about Jack Graney today, huh? Yeah, he was Cleveland Indians. He played for the Indians, yep. and he was a terrific broadcaster. In fact, Jack Buck said that he was the guy that inspired him to be a broadcaster. We know what a superstar he is, and his son is as well. But uh, I want to congratulate that. You also got Thank another you. award. The VBDI, the Vital Ball Dome Index, has now put you into the Vital Ball Dome Index Hall of Fame. <laughs>
I thought the award was going to be surviving 25 years working with Dick Vitale. I thought that was the award I was going to be getting. <laughs> oh, man. Clark inside, and the lane is good for Jackson. They're playing well, Kentucky, right now. Get a little bit more ball movement. As I told you earlier, Jackson's going to be a special player, a double-double guy down at Kentucky. Abaji got off to a quick start tonight for Kansas, but he's been held in check recently. Garrett's done a most of the scoring the last few minutes. Now Abaji for three, and they needed that one. They need a few threes. Got to go on a little run here, <clears throat> get a little momentum going into halftime. They've been sluggish offensively. You got to credit Kentucky with some good, solid defense as well. Kentucky beat Moorhead State 81 to 45 in their season opener, and then lost to Richmond 76-64. The Spiders moving into the rankings after that win as Clark knocks down a jumper. And how about the Atlantic 10? St. Louis beat LSU, and Richmond beat Kentucky. Two big wins for the A-10. And then Davidson's lost two one-point games. Lost to Indiana by one and lost today by to Providence by one. That league is very tough. And we haven't no. even talked about Dayton. And they got some key players back, but they don't have this time. Christian Brown with his first points of the night to get Kansas back within 10. Jackson on the block. Over Wilson, left hand, and he gets the bounce. You know what's really great there, and John was concerned about that? Spacing. They had real good spacing there for that isolation one-on-one -on -one maneuver by Jackson. I'm telling you, Dan, Jackson is going to be special. Wilson inside, and he muscles it up and in, and he's been a real contributor in the early going for the Jayhawks, a guy who broke his ankle early last season and had to use a medical redshirt. Yeah, he's just a good, solid, all-around player. Not a great athlete, but just a terrific basketball player, according to Bill Self. 3.43 to go in the first half. The Wildcats leading by 10. Well, it seems like John Calipari's been at Kentucky forever. 12th season now. Of course, he has been around, but way back in the day, and I do mean way back in the day, John Calipari for three years was an assistant coach at Kansas under Ted Owens and then later Larry Brown. 23-year-old John Calipari getting an assistant's job in Lawrence Dick back in the early 80s. I'll tell you one thing, his checks changed a little bit, don't you think? But he was getting down the playing, coaching as an assistant. He owes a lot to Larry Brown. He said Larry really helped him a great deal and taught him a great deal. And this guy has been a recruiting machine. And there aren't many guys that can handle a program at Kentucky with the kind of visibility, exposure they get, and the pressure down there to win. And he's been able to handle that fairly well. Yeah, 12th season as the head coach in Lexington, one national championship, four Final Fours, just a ton of first-round picks, a very young team again, and some likely first-round picks, but can they gel and mesh and improve and become a real force as a team over the next couple of months? A shot clock violation will hand it back over to Kansas, and that's not what you want to see coming out of a timeout, Dickie V. You know, I think one of the problems they're going to run into is inconsistency during a game. They're going to have moments in the game where they're going to look at you, you're going to tease you, you're going to say, oh my God, how good they look. And then you're going to see moments where they make some bad shots, turn the ball over, not make some shots from the perimeter, and I think it'll allow teams to hang with them and stay in the game. Let's bring Holly back in. Well, guys, after just five assists in their last game against Richmond, one of the messages from John Calipari at shoot-around today was one more, one more, one more, meaning one more pass. Try to get that ball to another teammate and don't be selfish. Well, on that last possession, Brandon Boston tried to do that. His one more pass was too short with the shot clock. The shot clock ran out. Immediately after that, he looked at his teammate. That was on me. That's my mistake. And that's something John Calipari asked this young team to do. When you guys screw up, I want to hear from you. Coach, I made a mistake. And it was nice to see Brandon Boston acknowledge that on that last possession. Yeah, the lack of passing was really a thorn in the side of John Calipari after the last game. They had only five assists and had 21 turnovers in the loss to Richmond as Bill Self and John Calipari both prowling the sideline in Indianapolis. Also, they missed 13 free throws in that game as well, but 0 for 10 shooting the three. He makes this Wide open the in the game, corner. Baby. Abaji misses the three. And we've got a foul going against Kentucky. They're not going to go away, this Kansas team. They're not going to go away. They got a lot of fight in them. They got a coach that knows how to win. And they got some players. So the bottom line is this game's going to get really, be, I think, a tough, tough game, especially in the second half. 
See Toppin on the floor now. I think about, you know, the lost season last year. In fact, that's my newest book, The Lost Season. And the bottom line, Dan, is the fact that Dayton would have made a lot of noise in the tournament. It's really feel bad for all those Dayton fans that didn't get an opportunity to see that team chase a national championship. And they lost two games all year. One was the Kansas in overtime, and they lost to Colorado. That was the only two losses. Jackson a little bit strong in the jumper, and Brown down with a rebound for Kansas. As poorly as it has gone for the Jayhawks, they have managed to creep back within eight points here, which is over two minutes to go in the half. They're going to get Brown the three. They're going to get him three for three. He says, three, I'm going to back two right there. <laughs> little back door. He said, I don't want the three, Dickie V. I want the two on the back door car. A nice backdoor cut. Defense doesn't see ball, you man. Mark has no vision. You got to see both. You got to see ball, you man. That is back to the play. And oh, nice play Brown right got a T after the dunk dig. Yeah, well, that's I think the rule. doing a little, little chin up on the rim. They got no choice but to call it going to the rule book. Devin Askew at the line for Kentucky, and he knocks down the free throw. He's got a key player. You know, he's a key player for them. And he's going to make some shots. He played for an outstanding AAU team, Dream Vision, and he really is a kid that they're counting on. He's not going to beat you with a lot of speed and all, but he's going to, he knows how to play. And if he can square his body and get a good look at the rim, he'll make shots. Yeah. One more look from the baseline. Hung on the rim a bit and may have said something as he came back down to the ground to Jackson. So I, I think it was probably that. I think it was more of a taunting technical. They're uh, assessed to Christian Brown. See, that's the thing we don't have down by being at court side where we can be right on top of those referees. We used to have great communication with all those guys. Clark one on one with Abachi. Good matchup here. Clark the handoff to Jackson. Spins into the double team and can't get it to go off the window. That was not a good shot right there. Doubles up. He had to make an extra pass. There's a pretty good shot right there, but Abachi leaves the open three well short. Give us an example right there what Holly was talking about. Making the extra pass, and right there, Jackson didn't do it in that possession. They play a little bit too much one on one, Kentucky. Yeah. Nice pass right, right there, though. Tried to make the pass there. And a steal by Brown. And then he's fouled by Askew. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, it'll be Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Lafonso Ellis. They'll tell you about a first for Tom Izzo and also players to watch in the Jimmy V Classic tomorrow night. I said earlier, Dick, about Illinois with Desumu and Coburn having maybe the best inside-outside combo in America, and I can just feel Gonzaga fans saying, and now, hey, wait a minute, because Gonzaga, I mean, they're loaded all through the lineup. But they've got freshman Jalen Suggs, who has been outstanding at the point. And they've got Drew Timmy inside, one of the best big men in America. And, oh, by the way, Corey Kispert scoring about 24 a game on the wing right now for the Zags. Well, tell me about Timmy. All you got to do is to my last game I did with Bob Wischusen before this game was down there in their tournament, and he came in a game and dominated, and I kept going off and off about Timmy, Timmy, Timmy's going to be a star. <laughs> Not just a good player, a star. And if you don't believe me, pull a Warner Wolf and go to the tape, and you get that tape. As I told America then, this guy's going to be an All-American. You know, when you're right, you got to say it, because when you're wrong, everybody will tell you, especially with social media. Well, here's what Gonzaga did in their game against Kansas. They beat the Jayhawks 102 to 90. And in the first two games of the year, they've also got a win over Auburn. Timmy is averaging 26 and a half points per game and shooting 71% from the field. Well, his footwork on the inside, his post-up ability is unreal. Hey, get back to Reese Davis. I want to be his agent. Are you kidding me? The hours he's putting in, the work he does, NBA drafts, what he does in football. Come on, man. That guy is unbelievable. I'm so proud of you, Reese. You're working too hard, buddy. <laughs> Abaji at the line for Kansas. And speaking of college football, Saturday, Justin Fields and Ohio State are in East Lansing to take on a Michigan State squad coming off a big upset over previously unbeaten Northwestern. Saturday, noon Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app.
you know, talking about what I just mentioned, hey man, the book back and memory to me. The great late Al McGuire one time grabbed me. I was doing like three, four games a week. He's a Dixie, you never call me a Dixie. You're not a star. Stars work less and make more, like I do. And he was right. <laughs> That's what you've been you've been advising me for twenty years to, to work less and make more like you do. <laughs> we can't all be you, Dickie V. Hey, no, I don't Kansas back within five all of a sudden, Richie. Look at this. It's a five-point game all of a sudden. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. I told you they're going to be back. They're just so well coached, and they just got tough, tenacious kids. And let me point this out, too, because it applies to both these teams and also in the first game. Teams like Duke and Michigan State, teams like Kentucky and teams like Kansas, they really suffer with this pandemic from this standpoint. They have such electrifying crowds that really get them through those moments when they need that adrenaline. Like when Kentucky, for example, was struggling there with Richmond. You got 20,000 in that building, passionate fans. That gets the players so psyched and so able to perform. So I think these teams, you don't have that great home court advantage. You still got an advantage because you're familiar with the arena. You don't have to travel the whole bit. But it's not the same as having that crowd behind it. Would you yep. agree? Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. Did the game at Rupp Arena on Sunday, the Kentucky Richmond game, and in Lexington they were allowing up to 15% capacity, so there were maybe 3,000 fans in the arena, but even with a few fans there, Rupp Arena is so big, you're used to like 21,000, 22,000, and it's just a whole different vibe, there's no question. Garrett struggling to keep control. Abaji with the shot clock running down, had to force it up. Or the game clock, excuse me, running down, had to force it up. And that'll bring the first half to a close. Kansas, really sluggish for several minutes, picked it up a little bit towards the end of the half. And they've gotten back within six points at halftime, despite shooting only 31% in the first half. 11 for 35. Kentucky shot 45%. They've got a six-point lead. Let's go to Holly Rowe, who is with John Calipari. Well, guys, we are here with the coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. And, Coach, your defense was terrific at times. Seven blocks, seven steals. How were they effective at disrupting Kansas? Isaiah's defense was really good at times. And, you know, we – the second foul, 25 feet from the basket. You know what I'm saying? We, But it happens, and he reached in. But we still – the decision making to create shots we still are holding it too long or we're getting bumped and guys are taking weak shot and saying he fouled me this is college this is not so we got to get tougher and make those plays I thought Olivier played well I mean really we look what I'm looking for is that kind of defense and rebounding please get better offensively you would think the thing I wouldn't have to worry about would be offense with the talent and the ability but we're not sharing yet. Yet. It's early. Um, but Kansas is a good team. They're tough. They'll make shots. Coach, we did see them try to make the extra pass at times. Do you think the message is starting to sink in about sharing? Well, I, I get a chance to watch the tape. It's hard for me when I'm doing it because there are things I think, and then I watch the tape and I'm wrong. And it's not very often, but there will be times I'm wrong. And so I'll have to go back and apologize and tell the kids that that's on me. But... Um, you know, like I said, we're just all this team is we just got to keep building. You know, we got to keep we got to be mature. We can't have answers. We can't have it. Kentucky is a no excuse program. It is. And if you have an excuse, let somebody else play. It's just how we do it. Love it, coach. No Thanks. excuses for the second half. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. A six-point lead for the Calipari Wildcats over the Kansas Jayhawks at halftime in Indianapolis. Time now for the Jeep Halftime Report. Let's send it back to the studio along with Coach and the Fonz. Here's Reese Davis. <laughs> Welcome back to ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's and the State Farm Champions Classic. Leading scorer for Kansas in the first half, Ochai Abaji who's averaging 17 and a half through the first two games. He had 10 in the first half. How about Isaiah Jackson? Four blocks, 10 rebounds, and seven points in this ESPN Sonic blockbuster. Jackson had an outstanding first half and is a big reason to Mr. Vital why Kentucky has the lead. Yeah, he really was special. There's no question about his athleticism. And he had 14 rebounds in his game prior, but the bottom line is he's special. 
they have to do a better job sharing the basketball. Too much one-on-one allowed, I think, Kansas to get back in the game. When they had that double-digit lead, they were really moving the ball a little bit better, and they were doing a better job helping on defense. They allowed Kansas now back in the game. Now, will the young kids, how are they going to play down the pressure situation? Remember, when they played in high school, many of these kids, they're superstars. They did anything they basically wanted, number one options. Now they got to learn to play with other people, and it takes time, time before they can develop that rhythm, efficiency. Kansas didn't shoot well at all. Both teams turned it over far more than the number of assists they had in the first half. For more as we head into the second half, once again, here's Holly Rowe. Well, think about the performance of Marcus Garrett for Kansas in this game. Just hours before the game, we were told he was unlikely to play, battling through some type of an illness. But he's out here, the second leading scorer on this team with eight points, three rebounds, also playing terrific defense. He's giving it all for this Kansas team, and they've needed his spark. Absolutely have. Remember, each of these teams has already lost a game. Kansas lost to Gonzaga. Kentucky lost to Richmond. Somebody's going out of here one and two on the young season. We're now ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster. Kentucky with a six-point lead, and they'll get the ball to open up the second half. You know, last year, for example, we did the game. They got beat by Duke to start the season. And then at the end of the year, I mean, Kansas was dynamite. Well, I think their last 16 in a row, they only gave up 80 points one time all year last year. Yeah, and this season started a little later. It'll have fewer games. But, Dick, as you know well, a lot can change between now and the middle of February into early March. I think the big thing is the toughness of the conference. I think Bill Self will tell you, the Big 12 this year, there's no, there's no cupcakes. I mean, everywhere you go, you can come to play. I mean, there's some quality teams in that league. Yeah, the first half, you talked about Baylor. You talked about West Virginia. You talked about Texas Tech. How about a Texas as well? Texas, uh, Shaka Smart looks like he's got a really good team. Well, you know, he struggled that first game. He was able to pull it out against Davidson. But today, he was very impressive. I mean, it blew out Indiana, and Indiana had blown out a good Providence team. So how do you figure it out? I mean, day to day, it's unreal. But I, Dick, I a agree, technical I foul on Bill Self here in the opening seconds of the second half. See, not being on court side, we can't get that feeling there. That's what's yeah. happening. That's the one negative. But one of the positives, when this ends, in five minutes, I'm in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you're just joining us, things, as everybody knows, are a little bit different, a lot different this season. Dick's at his home in Sarasota. I'm here at the studio in Charlotte. You saw Holly. She is on site tonight and will be tomorrow night as well for the Jimmy V Classic. We'll be back doing the same kind of thing. Dick will be on the second game, the Illinois-Baylor game. Jay Billis will join me for the first game, which is Gonzaga and West Virginia. Oh, you can hear, you can hear Calipari screaming and yelling, help out, come yep. on, help out, Devin. 16-foot <laughs> jumper not there for Jalen Wilson. And it'll be Kentucky ball. Devin Askew into the front court, a guy who reclassified from 2021 into the 2020 class. He was considered to be the top point guard prospect in the 2021 class. Reverse, and Brown might have gotten a piece of that, knocked away, and back come the Jayhawks. Inside McCormick, surrounded by a couple of defenders, finds the cutting Wilson, and it'll be an offensive foul on Jalen Wilson. See, I thought right there in that possession, McCormick should have made himself available on a post in terms of trying to score. He been trying to make the extra pass, trying to be a teammate. He got a little double up there, he found the open man, but I thought he could have used a drop step and be able to get to the goal. Kentucky up six of the break, up nine right now. They led by double figures for a few minutes in the first half. Boston, corner, misses the three, and a Brown down with a rebound, and he's knocked down by Olivier Saar, and that is going to be the third foul on Saar, and now John Calipari's got a decision to make. Well, he's got to take him out, but you know, Dan, think about this. He's a veteran player. You can understand a freshman kid doing that. He's fouling a valuable guy like him from 70, 80 feet away from the goal. No yeah. reason whatsoever for that. He's too smart. He's too cerebral. 
He can't do that. Just can't do it. Now he's going to go to the bench and he's going to become an assistant coach. And John doesn't need any assistant coaches. He's got too many right now. <laughs> he's got a lot of assistant coaches, hasn't he? Lance yeah, Ware is coming to the game now the, for Sar. <laughs> he's got all the fans in Kentucky. Now they're all assistant coaches. Yeah, that's true. Who can get it going? Who can provide a spark at the offensive end for Kansas? Wilson with a nice shot fake and a drive to lay it in. That was a good play by Wilson right there. Good first step, good explosive move to the goal. I like what I saw right there, that kid. He originally committed to Michigan, who, by the way, had the best recruiting class in the country coming in in 2021. Jawan Howard's doing a job. They just survived the game, had an overtime win over Oakland a couple of days ago. One more look at the Jalen Wilson play that you like, Dick. Yeah, take a look at Jalen right now. Nice triple threat position. There's a big hole. Nobody rotated over defensively. I mean, come on now. You got to play the ball. The ball's the most dangerous thing on the floor. There was no rotation out of Kentucky. Well, he'll show that when he shows the video. John will be all over him about that. Nobody came over to the help side. Brown looking Go inside. To the Good deep Go position to the there for McCormick. And out of bounds to Kentucky. See McCormick right there, angles, Dan. You gotta have angles when you drop step and drive to the goal. I gotta get him alone with UB Brown. UB will teach him those drop steps down in the post. He was the best, UB. He was the best teacher I've ever seen in my life at five star camp. Yeah, that's the second time that McCormick's kind of gone to a, a drop step and a jump hook, but he's been so so far towards the baseline, he hasn't been able to use the glass. Yeah, he doesn't get good angles. Good help right there. Askew trying to drive an Abaji. Nice kick. Fletcher in the corner. Misses the three and down with the rebound is Wilson. You know, I'd allow them to shoot the three until they can prove they can make it, Dan. I really would. That's like the last two possessions shooting threes. Well, you can see the numbers tonight. The Wildcats just one for ten from beyond the arc in this game. 0 for ten on Sunday against Richmond. But I'll tell you what they can do. They can some kind of block shots. Kentucky's got nine blocks on the night. Yeah, that's offensive those foul though on Terrence have. Clark. They're learning, huh? They're really young and they're yeah. learning on the fly. Well, you're gonna learn here playing the best, playing against good clubs. That's how you learn. You know, you mentioned earlier they lost to Richmond. That Atlantic 10 is one of the most underrated conferences in, in around. They they really have quality basketball. That Dayton team was so special last year. Lob up top for McCormick, and he is fouled. They're trying to go to McCormick a little bit, trying to establish a little post rhythm to their offense. You got to have a little balance. You got to have some inside play and some perimeter play. Well, other than McCormick, the next biggest guy they've got is Mitch Lightfoot, a fifth-year senior who plays about seven minutes a game. But sometimes they don't have any big guys on the floor at all, really. Hey, a reminder, tomorrow night we'll be with you for the 26th annual Jimmy V Classic on ESPN. And we've got a couple of outstanding matchups for you. Gonzaga taking on West Virginia. Mark Few and Bob Huggins, two good buddies. And they are looking forward to their two teams clashing in Indianapolis tomorrow night. Then it'll be number five, Illinois, number two, Baylor. Both games from Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. But they're both going to be such great games. They're really excited in Illinois, man, over that team. Fletcher misses the three. Kentucky now one for 11 from beyond the yard. Kansas, Keep though, allowing. not much better. They're two for 10. Keep allowing me to shoot that three. Go to the goal. Go to the goal strong. Kicks it back out to Abaji. He drives. Can't finish. Fletcher has it. Here come the Wildcats. An opportunity to run. Boston right into the chest of Garrett, and he's he called for the travel. So both teams still struggling offensively. Just 38-33 Kentucky. Four minutes and change into the second half. Some self-impersonations when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays. And the Queso Burger for just $3.99, only for a limited time at Sonic.
you doing, stud? Bill Self, Kansas. I just wanted to let you know, you came out here today, you couldn't guard anything. You couldn't score the pencil. Comical. I don't get it. You gotta turn it up. Get on the line. <laughs> Mitch Lightfoot just getting away with stuff, imitating his coach in a Bill Self. Just an absolutely great guy, Mitch Lightfoot. I'm sure you've talked to him, Dick. Fifth year senior. Guy's been around the program a, a long time. You know, you got to loosen up those coaches a little bit. Got to make fun of the coaches every now and again, too, right? You got to do that. You got to loosen them up because they're so intense. The intensity in this game is unreal. Everything is about what have you done today. People don't care what you did yesterday. Now, when you were back coaching at the University of Detroit back in the 70s, did your players imitate you? Oh, sure. I'm, I, I'm glad that. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Oh, look at an offensive rebound right there. Great offensive rebound. Jalen Wilson lays it back in to make it a three-point game. They None just of us don't imitate go away. you now, though, Dick. You don't have to worry about that. None of us are doing Dickie B impersonations now. <laughs> <laughs> Pull-up jumper, Clark, too strong. Offensive rebound, Boston. Jackson, no. And Kansas with a chance to get back within one, maybe tie on this trip. You know, Dan, they want to shoot the jump shot too much. They're just so impatient. I can understand what Cal's talking about. But they defend well, basically, and they rebound and block shots. And I'll always keep them in the game. Jackson with yet another block. Brown wide open. Will never be more wide open, but he misses the three. And it's out of bounds. And which way are they going to? Looks like they're going to give it to Kansas. You can see the frustration on Brown's face because he's been so on fire shooting the three in the first two games. They really struggle a little bit here right now. He's a key player for them. Fran Frischella told me, and Fran knows the league inside out, told me that this guy is a tough, hard-nosed guy, and he's getting a lot of minutes this year, and he was right. He's a valuable player to this team. Well, I'll tell you who else knows the league inside out. Holly Rowe. Holly, what do you have? Well, I really like Christian Brown. He gets his fire and his tenacity from his mom. She was an absolutely fantastic athlete herself playing at Missouri. And uh, Lisa Sandubothy, she was in the Missouri Hall of Fame. She is one of seven siblings who all went to college on a Division I scholarship for athletics, one of the most athletic families in Missouri sports history. And uh, I just love his toughness. He's already got eight rebounds tonight, guys. He's doing it on the glass, doing a lot of tough plays for Kansas, and he gets that from mom and stuff. See, I yeah, just learned something. I think, you know, Go ahead, yeah, if we got Holly, we got Holly on a game. We learn a lot, a lot of information mm -hmm. she gives us. <laughs> How about eight rebounds for a six-six two guard? But as Holly says, he is known for his toughness and his tenacity. And he, like you said earlier, though, Dan, you know, he wasn't a big time McDonald's High School All American. There's so many kids out there. All they need is an opportunity and a chance. Third foul on Terrence Clark, Dick, and he goes to the bench. And one of two for Wilson to make it a two-point game. Michigan State winning the opening game of the Champions Classic. They trailed early, then went on a big run down at Cameron and wound up defeating Duke. Got great play out of Henry and certainly out of Watts. And he kid off the bench, Marble gave him plus play for Tom Izzo and his kids. Can't wait to well, see Rock them against Virginia. Rocket Watts a big key for Michigan State this year, don't you think? Absolutely. Oh. Askew with a shot clock running down has to force it up and an empty possession right there for Kentucky. Well, you know, momentum right now. Uncle Mo's on the side of the veteran kind of guys with Abaji and Garrett and company against the young kids. Shot selection, especially come down to late in the game, is so vital to either winning or losing. And a Kentucky foul. That's already the sixth foul committed by the Wildcats. You're barely six minutes into the second half. So Kansas, whenever the next one happens, they'll be spending a lot of time at the free throw line the rest of the way. They got to make those free throws, man. Special see situation. the foul trouble. Sars got three. Clark's got three. And now Askew's got three. That's part of coming out of the scholastic ranks, playing on the collegiate level, too. Learning how to play team defense. All these guys are being superstars so offensively. Didn't have to do all of that. And Askew has to sit down with that third foul. Boston back into the game. 
And it will be Mintz at the point for Kentucky with Askew on the bench. Wilson drives, spins, and draws the foul. Looks like this one will be on Lance Ware, and Wilson headed back to the free throw line. Tell you, Wilson's been a plus for them right here, Dan. He has really given them some positive minutes. You know, came into this game having averaged 12 and a half points per game through the first two games of the season, seven points, and just as importantly, he's got 10 rebounds. Already on the night, he knocks down the first free throw, and now six of his eight points have come here in the second half. I've been very sorry with three fouls. He's back into the game. One of the reasons you can keep Czar in the game, Dan, is that they don't have a legitimate post guy. If he was in there now and they had Azabuke and he had to guard him, you'd be in trouble right now because Bill Self would be pounding the ball into him to get that fourth foul. Missed free throw, but an offensive rebound. And Kansas looking for the lead. Wilson for three. Around and out, a battle for the rebound. And Boston had it, but lost it. And it'll be Kentucky ball. You know, it's another thing about this Kentucky team. They have great length. But, Dick, how much physical strength do they have? They don't have a lot of wide bodies on this team. No, but the bottom line is they're going to get stronger. they got a great weight training program, great nutrition down there. they got everything that's needed to be a success. A mismatch size-wise with Jackson being guarded by Brown, but a timeout is called. Look at John Calipari out on What's the court, doing? getting in the key. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's trying to show him how to post. He couldn't post that Clarion State. He was Cupcake City. Two iconic programs that have had some of the greatest players in college basketball and basketball history over the years kansas and kentucky what more do you need to know how about john calipari saying yeah my guys may be good but they're young and i still got to teach them including running out onto the court as the timeout <laughs> is beginning and trying to talk to isaiah jackson about how he should post up a smaller defender dickie v i tell you one thing john eats sleeps and drinks the game i mean he absolutely loves what he does and his passion is what makes him special 24 Players, points on a point. Wow. Calipari won. <laughs> They're giving oh, Cal credit for a, for a good post up there. Kansas, which last led at 5-2 to two in the opening minutes of the game, will have a chance to take the lead here as Christian Brown will be heading to the line on what I believe is the fourth foul of the night on Olivier Saar. And what a big wow. turning point that could be with 12.46 to go. It is number four on Saar as he tried to slow down Brown in transition and paid the price, and he knows it. He knows he's coming out after this first free throw, and that's a big loss for well, the Wildcats. Brown did a great job of taking the ball for the goal. Now he's got to convert. You know, Bill Self got into the Hall of Fame. When he got into the Hall of Fame, his class included Tracy McGrady, Rebecca Lobo, Muffet McGraw, Tom Jernstadt, Jerry Krause, Manny Jackson, and George McGinnis. Tom Jernstadt had passed this year. He was so important to the NCAA. Tom did a great job. And since I'm talking about that, what about a tribute? John Thompson, Lou Olson, Eddie Sutton, Lou Henson, Billy Tubbs, Smokey Gaines, who worked with me, Dr. Wilkes, Glenn Wilkes. I mean, I think of all those people who have lost their lives this year. It just breaks my heart because I knew all of them, and they were all just yeah. great people dedicated to this game that we all Love. Legends of the game, some fantastic college basketball coaches that you just mentioned. Kansas on top for the first time since very early in the first half. As Marcus Garrett, we haven't had said his name much in the second half. He hasn't been in there all the time. And again, he's battling illness, but is playing through it right now as he's called for the foul. You know, down, remember when they went down double digits? I told you, I said, the bottom line is this club's not going away. Kansas is well coached. They got kids that are winners when you took a Baji, Garrett, and company, Brown. And they're just not going to go away. Jackson working hard on the offensive glass, and he draws the foul. Isaiah Jackson 
maybe between the rebounding and the block shot stick, he's probably been the best player that Kentucky's had tonight. Well, you know, what he does really well, he has a nose for the ball. He just does a rebound in his area. He goes after balls <coughs> laterally as well. Jackson with 11 rebounds and six block shots. He averaged almost eight blocks per game last year as a high school senior. Boston with a drive, absorbs a little contract, and puts Kentucky back on top. And that's his ability. He's got very skilled with the basketball. You get your one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to beat you. He's just got to add a little bit more to his game, a more consistent range as a shooter. And that would elevate his game big time. NBA people love him right now. The mock draft should look at. He's rated very high. Wilson driving again. Reverses it up oh, and in. Wow. And they are getting big time minutes out of Jalen Wilson. Shows he's healthy now. He was out all year with an injury. Kentucky led by double digits for much of the first half, but the second wow. half has belonged to the Jayhawks, wow. my friend. Look at that reverse layup. Incredible. That's a Dan Schumann kind of shot. They don't <laughs> shoot shots like that in Canada, do they, Dan? Come on. They don't shoot shots like that. From Alumni Hall at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois, ESPN presents NCAA college basketball action. To my left, former coach at Rutgers, Detroit University, and with the Detroit Pistons in the NBA, Nick Vitale. Well, it should be a classic matchup. College basketball excitement, enthusiasm. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, wow. Are what do you, you remember serious? about that night? Are you huh? serious? Oh my God, 42 years ago. I mean, that was really a fun time starting out. But then I had Jim Simpson, who really broke me in. I used to beat him up with his left leg. Man, I used to hit him with my elbow, just like I did to you. See, you miss that now. You know what? You beat up Brad Nessler. You beat up Mike uh, Patrick. You beat up me. You beat up with Musburger, shoes and You beat up everybody, right? Musburger. Tarico, you beat up everybody. John Saunders. <laughs> I, love, I love making contact with you guys while I'm doing the game. So I can say, give me some air time. Give me yeah. some AT. Yeah, there's a lot of hooking and holding. You're a hook and hold guy when you when you when we work beside you. <laughs> well, it's great to see you, even if it's virtually, even if we're not together in the same place. It is great to see you as uh, we get a chance to do college basketball. A lot of fun. It's unbelievable. We'll have a game tomorrow night. We get that Baylor Illinois game. First yep. game's gonna be very good. Gonzaga. Bob Huggins got a real strong team. West Virginia. Two-point lead for Kansas over Kentucky. 11-15 to go and a steal by Christian Brown. Well, Christian Brown stole that ball because the offensive player never stepped to the ball. You got to step to the ball. You can't just expect the ball to come to you. You got to want to go get that ball. Kentucky has scored only five points in the second half in nine minutes of action. And they've gone from up six to down two. Here against Kansas. Askew turns it over on the drive, but then Jackson knocks it away, and Kentucky gets it back. You know, it's almost similar in a way to Richmond game, Dan, as you did the game. They were really up four at the halftime, and the second half, Richmond took the game over. Yeah. Richmond shot the ball very poorly in the first half. Once they started making shots, they took the lead. And, and you talked about this in the first half tonight. I thought Kentucky played right into Richmond's hands. They were trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, dribbling by guys, and those small guards for Richmond, you just can't dribble the ball in front of them. They're going to take it away from you, especially Gilliard. And you're not going to win when you shoot 2 for 13, 0 for 6 yeah. from the 3. That's a formula for losing. I thought the momentum was really created for Richmond by the play by Gilliard be around behind his back right in front of John Calipari, the length of the court through a teammate for a layup. Boy, it's hard to believe how poor Kentucky has been offensively in the second half. You just saw the numbers, yet they are still down by just two. Yeah, both clubs struggling offensively. You can see it's early in the year. The rhythm's just not there because of the pandemic. They haven't had the kind of play in time. Like most people look at turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Dewan Harris comes up with a steal, and Jalen Wilson is headed back to the free throw line again. Harris does a good job defensively creating offense. He gives him a pure point guard when he's on the floor. He was a red shirt last year. 
This game can come down to that charity stripe for Kansas. Get in that line and make your free throws. Jalen Wilson, who's already got his first career double-double. He's now got 12 points and 10 rebounds. Here are the current odds, Mr. Vital, to win the national championship. And this is college basketball, so it's anybody's game. But again, Zaga, Villanova, and Baylor, the top three. You know, Iowa's a very interesting team. With Luka Garza back, all the experience that they've got, Big Ten is loaded right now. Yeah, the Big Ten is definitely loaded. And Luka Garza at 41 the other day. He's the preseason favorite to be player of the year. I think he's got a little chip on his shoulder, too, to prove to those experts in the NBA, I am an NBA player. He's a great college player. Brad yeah. McCaffrey's got other parts around him as well. Including his sons. Yep. Boston with an 18-foot pull-up, too strong, kept alive. And the follow is good. That's Jacob Toppin, who has just come into the game recently for the first time tonight. The transfer from Rhode Island, the younger brother of former Dayton star Obi Toppin. Yeah, they thought he was going to sit the year out. Here he is working the offensive boards. That's a little resemblance of his brother. I think he's going to be a great steal, his brother, for the New York Knickerbockers. I think they made a great choice in getting him. They also well, got Emmanuel quickly as well. Yep. Jacob Toppin has a 42-inch vertical leap. There are some things you just can't teach. Exactly. You can't teach size. You can't teach that athleticism. They think he'll be definitely a player. His brother came on strong leap. Let's go back to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I love that when Obi was having his big moment getting drafted in the NBA draft recently, he had his brother right there on the iPad, on the couch, so that he could experience hmm. that, that moment. They are so close. I know there's a lot of love between these two brothers, and I love that they went to that extra effort to have him with them during the NBA draft, even though he was here preparing for the season with Kentucky. So I know Holly and I had a first, great time. Huh? Dad, Holly and I had a great time doing a Dayton game last year at the end of the year with Bob was choosing. It was a terrific time. The Dayton fans are so passionate. I'll tell you what, Dick, when the world gets back to normal, there are two places. I have not done a game at Dayton. I have not done a game at Creighton. You got some pull around this place. Let, let's go do a game at those two places. Yeah, we got to do it. Let's go. You know, I'm dreaming and hoping at my age that one time I could get in the crowd again with the fans. You know, before the game, I would have been there with all the fans uh, having a ball. I love it. I miss that so much. Well, we appreciate everybody watching at home and hopefully a little basketball here and there is a bit of a distraction or a diversion from what has been an unbelievably tough year for so many people. Yeah, and I just want to simply repeat this. People, you know, just follow the experts out there, the health experts. Put that mask on, social distance, wash those hands. It's not hard to follow those things. we got to do something to contain this incredible disease that's running rampant. And even though we've all gotten used to it, doesn't it still look a little bit strange to see those shots of an arena, 20,000 seats, no fans, watching a basketball game between Kansas and Kentucky. And, of course, the um, NCAA, Dan Gabbitt, the senior vice president of basketball for the NCAA, and, and he and his group, they've talked about, Dick, that in all likelihood, it appears, the NCAA tournament will be held largely in the Indianapolis area, or at least the Indiana area. They might need some more gyms outside of, of Indianapolis itself, but this arena right now could be where the Final Four is, right? Absolutely. Great transition right there. You know, you mentioned Dan Gavin. His dad would be so proud of him because he's doing a really good job in a very trying situation. Mm -hmm. It was a nice transition game right there by Kentucky. And that's where the luck sell. Turn around by McCormick won't go. And now the Wildcats coming down looking for the lead. If you don't play defensive transition basketball, it's Kentucky, you're going to be in trouble. Big time. One thing Kansas has done is make them play five on five. 7.48 to go in the second half, all tied up at 44. Let's take a look at our assist of the game brought to you by State Farm. And it's Davion Mintz of Kentucky leading the break and finding Jacob Toppin, who elevates and lays it in. Sweet feed and a nice finish by Toppin. Toppin giving him a little spark off the bench, Dickie V. Yeah, he really has. He shows that athleticism, 
athleticism right there in that transition. And Mintz did a great job finding him. So you got the two transfers contributing right there. They're going to give us the czar rolling. He's got four fouls. He's going to be a major factor, and no doubt about it. It's just a matter of getting familiar with his teammates. And his teammates learn to find him and learn to move the ball. They'll get better shots. The reason they're struggling shooting is because they haven't understood yet what a good shot is. Tied at 44 with 7.48 to go in the second game of the Champions Classic. Michigan State defeating Duke in Durham in the first game of the Champions Classic tonight. And Michigan State ended in 0 for 4. They had lost four games in a row in the Classic. Allen for three, too strong. And Kentucky continuing to struggle. Now just one for 15 from three-point range. Coming off an that's 0 for a, 10, so that's yes. 1 for 25, Dan. Wow. In today's game, just so hard to win if you can't make threes. Abaji posting. McCormick following, and he draws the foul. David McCormick played 19 and 12 minutes of the first two games of the season for Kansas. And again, sometimes we are seeing Bill Self go small, really with five perimeter players in the game. But don't you think ideally they would love Dick to get about 25 powerful minutes out of McCormick in the middle? Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, really in a certain situation, they did that against St. Joseph's. But a lot of the teams they're going to face West Virginia with their bigs inside, uh, they're not going to be able to do that. Guys like Hover and uh, the kid Shibwe on the inside. Those guys are very tough, hard-nosed players. You think about Texas Tech. You think about Baylor with their people inside. Be very tough to play with five horns. So he's got to come through for that. They need him to be a positive force. He's got some skills. He was a McDonald's All-American. Let's go to Holly Rowe with more. You guys are talking about the limited minutes of David McCormick, and there's a reason why. He got a little nicked up in their last game. He's got that knee brace on his right knee. He also sprained his ankle, so he's been a little bit, as Bill Self calls it, nicked up. He's playing through that. He, he didn't practice for two days this week. He did practice yesterday, looked good enough to get some minutes in the game tonight, but he's not 100%. I mean, let's be real right here, Dan. Just look at this. This is not going to be a vintage Kansas team. This is not your vintage, what you've had in the past in terms of the talent level. You've got a lot of good players, but you don't have supers. To me, the one super is certainly Garrett when we see Garrett at his full strength. How about the minutes the Toppin's giving him? Giving him a real spark as Kentucky goes back on top. But he can earn some playing time now. One thing about John Calipari, if you produce, and Bill Self as well, that's why the Hall of Fame is you produce, you're going to get minutes. Garrett with a drive. Another block by Isaiah Jackson. Hey, oh, that's big. the three. That's big. They made a three. They made a three. Isaiah Jackson with his seventh block of the night, Dick, leading to a three at the other end. Yeah, that was a great block shot. Great timing right there. Look at that timing. He loves that. He loves blocking shots. And that was a Mr. Mintz, right? Mr. Mintz. He was. Yes, sir. Creighton, baby. Creighton. Tomorrow night, the Jimmy V Classic. You'll be with us for the second game, Dick, and a, a great opportunity to raise money for the V Foundation. Well, you can raise money also. People go to DickVitale.com and get an autographed copy of my latest book, The Lost Season. I did it with Hoops Weiss, a terrific guru in basketball. Howie Schwab did our research, and I'm telling you, it was a fun book. And I got a bunch outside. I got an autograph for a bunch of fans, and I'm telling you, I love doing this. I'll write anything you want. You want me to write Kentucky's the greatest, Kansas the greatest? I will write that. You want to write it? Every dollar, Dan, every dollar mm -hmm. I would make is going for kids battling cancer. To the v we'll, tell you more, we'll tell you more about it tomorrow night. Gonzaga and West Virginia in the first game. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then the second game, Illinois Baylor won't start till about 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, this being the year that it is, there's got to be all kinds of 
sanitizing between games. Normally the second game starts about 20, 25 minutes after the first, but more time is needed. But both games will take place in Indianapolis tomorrow night. Abachi with a nice look ahead to Harris. Kansas needs a bucket here. Brown baseline and another block, I think. I think Jackson's going to get credit for another one, and that would be number eight. He's saying, you know what? He's giving him a, a, an amendment where he said, hey, thou shalt not enter thy lane. Thou shalt not enter thy lane. How did they allow him to get out of the state of Michigan? He's from Michigan. Yeah. You know what's scary is as soon as you started talking, I knew exactly that you were going to say, thou shalt not enter thy lane. <laughs> but is it thy lane or is it my lane? Whose lane is it? <laughs> and we got a, an offensive foul now going against Kentucky. Boy, Jackson, again, we talked about it at the beginning of the night. You do not have to run plays for him. He'll get his at the offensive end on putbacks and in transition. His top end is called for the offensive foul. But Jackson yeah, no can be an right absolute there. game changer with the defensive end. Well, Kansas has got to get some scoring going here. They've really been stymied by Kentucky in the last few possessions. They need, they need something here. Wilson, and they get it. A big three for Jalen Wilson to make it a one-point game. He's been such a plus for them, Dan. He's been a big plus. Almost as much as a big plus you've been for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Wilson's got 16 on the night, 14 of them in the second half. He is easily the high scorer of the game for Kansas. Right here, he's going to spot up. Wide open, wide open. He's saying, shoot it. Jackson said, shoot it. And he's smart. Rather than attack Jackson, it would have been blocked. Now, this is the line this, is what hurt Kentucky. Yeah, this hurt this Kentucky in that game against Richmond. Sorry, Dick. With this smaller lineup for Kansas, you can see McCormick's not in the game. So Jackson's got to cover a perimeter guy. He didn't want to come out on the perimeter and challenge Wilson out beyond the three-point line. Boston makes them both. Kentucky by three. Made two important free throws right there because against Richmond, they missed 13. That came up big and hurt them. They have not been a good three-point shooting Perry. team. They have not been a good free throw shooting team so far on the young season. Kentucky we're talking about. Boy, Wilson is feeling it right now, and he knocks down another one, and this one will tie the game. Tell you one thing, this is going to bring his confidence way up. Now you can see why Michigan recruited him. He has 19 points tonight for Kansas. Nobody else has more than 10. Abachi with a rebound. He's the guy who's got 10, and he had them all at halftime. He hasn't scored in the second half. Wilson is feeling it. Not this time. Well, you can hear John Calipari yelling, Go, Jacob, go! Talking to Jacob Toppin to try to get him out in transition quicker. I'll tell you one thing. Every possession, every possession, his heart and his soul is in it. And it becomes contagious to the players, to the fans. When you know your leader has that passion, he hates to lose. I guess most coaches, you could say, hate to lose. 17 in the second half for Wilson as Boston puts Kentucky back on top. It bears repeating, Dick, that Marcus Garrett is not feeling well. He hasn't played all that much in the second half. We have hardly said his name in the second half. Wilson's been carrying them offensively. Garrett is in there right now, but he is clearly limited and not feeling like himself. Absolutely. Holly documented that during the game. Stomach issue. Could be a flu. No one seems to know exactly what it is. Eight points, five rebounds. No assist tonight for Marcus Garrett. Harris with the ball, getting some time at the point. A deep one for Brown. Inside four minutes to go. Mince coast to coast. The follow is missed by Saar. Oh, what an opportunity he had. And in transition at the other end, Wilson ties the game. That's a four-point turnaround, Dan. That's a four-point turnaround in transition right there. He had the jam, Saar. Hit the back of the rim. And Wilson now with a game-high 21 to tie it up for Kansas. <laughs>
hop in with an air ball on the three. And we get a foul going against the Wildcats, it looks like. Clark over the bat. Dickie B talked about the four-point swing. The missed follow by Saar. And then the layup at the other end for Wilson. And with less than four minutes to go, this game is tied. It's going to be a tough road. And I would tell the fans, don't you be mad at these kids. Don't be mad at them. Be mad at me. Then you start saying, all you out there, we want a stronger schedule. Why would we play everybody? Okay, now we're playing everybody, and you'll see the result. And that same guy said, look, I want us to play good. I'm fine with that record because I'm the one that wants them to play all these tough games. I'm not getting mad at these kids. I'll get mad at Cal for playing that kind of schedule. What was he thinking? Instead of being tested for corona, I should have been tested for drugs or something. He is something else. It is a very interesting schedule. They've just come off the Richmond game. They are playing Kansas tonight. And then, Dick, the next series of games for Kentucky, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, UCLA, Louisville. Now, some of those teams are still trying to find their footing in the early going this season. They've got Texas. Longhorns look really good in the Big 12 SEC. And then, of course, they've got the SEC schedule to deal with as well. But, hey, Dad, Georgia Tech lost, for example, to Mercer, lost to Georgia State. I mean, come on. On paper, Kentucky should win that. Notre Dame is in a situation. I don't know who made Mike Brake's schedule, but it's unbelievable. You should see the yeah. run he's got. He's got Western Michigan, and after that, he's got Kentuckys and Dukes and Syracuse, Virginias. Oh, it's unbelievable what he's facing. And, you know, UCLA, Mick Crone has got a bunch of kids a hustle scrap. But, you know, they struggle with Pepperdine, got beat easily by San Diego State. I mean, those are all winnable games. Louisville is a situation where Chris Mack's doing one heck of a job playing without three key players. Malik Williams is out. The kid Midland, who I saw last year in a game with Bob Schusen for San Francisco, sitting out. He's out. I think Williamson's out, and yet they're still winning. They won easily today over Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky, pretty good team. Two-point lead, Kansas. With three minutes, 15 seconds to go in a regulation from Indianapolis to right the now. nightcap. Nice move by Saar, and he ties the game. He's playing with four fouls. See, Dan, when I watched him do that right there and step out, shoot the three, you see the skills he possesses. He has got so much in his game that we have not seen yet. I think a lot of it's the kids on the team are going to have to find him and understand that he could be a special post player. Abaji knocks down the big. three. Veteran player, right? The veteran players are stepping up. Abaji on one end, Zara on the other end. And that's what you expect out of guys that are veterans. You want to hear Bad a crazy pass. stat? That's the first field goal by anybody on Kansas in the second half other than Jalen Wilson. And now Abaji's got two in a row. Got a T.O., baby. He got one. He needs a T.O. now. See, down the stretch. Down the stretch, Dan. The edge went to the veterans of Kansas so far over Kentucky. A quick five for Ochai Abaji, who had not scored in the second half until knocking down that three. And then the turnover leads to a run out and an easy dunk. And all of a sudden, the Jayhawks have a five-point lead. Well, a minute ago, you and I were talking. The only guy that scored for Kansas, a better field goal, was Wilson. And Wilson in the second half. Yeah, he had made six. Nobody else had made any until those two by Abaji. Hey, tonight after the game, stick around for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll have the top moments from the Champions Classic. Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly will join the show. And SVP's one big thing on what it'll mean to watch the Ravens and the Steelers on a Wednesday afternoon. Next on ESPN and the ESPN app. You want to talk Irish football, don't you? I'll tell you one thing, Dad. Scott Van Pelt's going to be one of our honored guests, along with Muffin McGraw, uh, Bruce Burrow, uh, also Coach Mullen from down of Florida, at my gala this coming year on May 7th. And I'm going to tell you, yeah, Brian Kelly, I'm going to tell you this. Ian Book's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in America. The guy is so talented, he should be in the top five for the Heisman. He should be in that Heisman run. Askew with a baseline runner won't go, but he's fouled by Christian Brown. That'll be the third on Brown. 
Let's bring in Holly. Well, Dick Vitale, I knew you'd be pretty excited about this, but I'm doing an interview with Ian Book on Thursday, so I knew you'd be excited. I don't think he's getting enough pub <laughs> nationwide, so I've got an interview with the young man. I think he's playing great for Notre Dame right now, and I think they're a favorite to be in the college football playoff the way they're playing. I tell you, Holly, he is really a terrific kid, a terrific player. You know, my family, we got seven degrees there. My granddaughter right now is a freshman at Notre Dame. My grandson, Ryan, just uh, committed to Notre Dame for lacrosse. So Notre Dame has been big in my family. The only thing is, my twins, my twin grandsons, we thought they were headed to Notre Dame, and they decided they're going to go to Duke and play tennis. 30 <laughs> minutes with Coach K. He out-recruited me. Five years I tried recruiting for the Irish, and Coach K met with him 30 minutes, and it was over. Kansas now by three, a little pressure here, Dick, by Kentucky. They get it into Garrett. Here comes the trap, and he gets out of it easily. Good spacing right there. Now Kentucky trying to force that turnover. Got to play good, intelligent, help defense. And again, five perimeter players in the game right now for the Jayhawks. Bill Self going back to a smaller lineup. He's going to ball handlers. You got ball handlers and drivers. That's the drive move. right there. Wow. Man. Jalen Wilson with 23 on the night, 21 of them in the second half. This has been a coming out party for Wilson. He's been a star of stars in this game, along with Jackson for Kentucky. Now good shot selection is important. Yeah. Boy, there's a lot more dribbling than passing oh, from wow, Kentucky wow. right now, but what a bucket. Boston just went and got a bucket. He just said, I'm going to get me two, and he's capable of doing that. He's got that kind of ability. One minute to go in regulation. Kansas with the ball and a three-point lead. Last meeting between these two clubs. Kentucky won the game at Rupp. Kentucky also beat them the last time they played in the Champions Classic. That was three years ago. Yeah, Wilson three in the last four, about though. Kansas won three in the last four. Garrett, no, and that'll be a shot clock violation as the ball never hit the rim, and that'll give it back to Kentucky. Well, we got nowhere to go. Turnover over the second half. Overtime. <laughs> yep. 41.8 to go. You can see the frustration on the face and in the body language of Garrett battling illness. You know, for sure, his energy level not where it normally is, just unable to have the kind of game that he wants to have. You can see it. Look at him. You can see it. You can see he's having a tough time breathing. And that's what Bill told me today. The last game, he said, Coach, I'm having a tough time breathing here in that game against St. Joe's. He played limited minutes. Boy, quick three there by Clark. Won't go. I and he's not really a long range shooter. Yeah, I don't know if that's really the shot John Calipari's looking for as poorly as Kentucky has shot the three ball lots of time. They had plenty of time to try to go for a two and make it a one-point game. Well, especially when that's not your strength. I think the one thing kids have to learn, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And John will get that done with them. I mean, Kentucky's got talent, but you look at that SEC, you know, we talked about the Big 12. Tennessee is going to be dynamite. Now, they were hit with that yep. quarantine, but Rick Barnes has a team. I mean, you can just tell when you talk to them, special. LSU, even though they lost, LSU will wait score. Club's got talent. When you think about the guys they got in that lineup, it's smart. And what for the company? Uh, you look also in that league. Keep an eye on Florida, and they were hit with the quarantine. And Arkansas. Arkansas has got a bunch of tenacious, tough players. Boy, Abadji misses both free throws, but Brown comes up with a huge offensive rebound. And then just can't foul. happen, right? Just can't no, happen no, if that, you're the Cats. Yeah. That's just fundamentals. That's fundamentals. you got to block out on that charity strike line. You can't let them come up with a rebound in a game with three-point differential. I mean, come on now. you got to block out. you got to block out. you got to go for the man there, that line. That could be costly. That could be costly. If he converts, that could be costly. Ooh, boy, they've missed three in a row. How about Christian Brown, Dick? Now with 13 rebounds in the game. He's, everybody describes him as a tough, tenacious kid. Holly did, Fran Fischella did when I called him up for a little scouting report. Makes one of two, and it's a four-point game. Askew driving, Sar. Sar's got to want the ball. 
Mins with a tough shot. And I think they're going to have a look and see if it's a two or a three. A timeout called by John Calipari. It looks like they have ruled it's a two initially. Called a two on the floor, and they'll have a look at it during the timeout. You know, I think Mintz has got to get more playing time, too. I think he gives him some stability on that floor. And Zara's got to be very active. I thought it was a two, John Damon. Again, where I'm located, let's see right here. Wow. I think he's very on close. the line. Yeah, I, and I they thought called he was on it a two I, initially. I thought the toe touched that line, but it's very tough to see. He's a good player, this kid. He's a good player down at Creighton before he got hurt. And he'll be a valuable contributor for Kentucky. I'm telling you, people are lucky they don't have to play Kentucky with the crowd they have down there because those fans are so passionate. Same you could say about Kansas, another great place where the fans love their team. Well, I'm not so sure that he's actually on the line as we get a couple of different looks at it, but we'll wait and see what the officials say. Huge difference, obviously, uh, whether you're down yeah. two or whether you're down one right now. It's got to be convincing, does it not? I don't know if he's touching that line. I don't know. Looks like, a, is there some space there? It's not without a doubt, is it, Dan? You, you got better eyes than me, buddy. Yeah. I don't know. We're looking on a on a monitor from uh, back here in the studio and you and your house. I think the officials are getting a better look at it than we are, so I think we'll just have to take their word for it. I think he's touching that line. I really do. When that toe comes up there, you And again, it was called a two on the floor, and that's important. Yeah, because if you're not certain, you got to stay with the call that you made, right? This could be a game changer, this call. Yeah, I can't tell. And it's going three. to be a three. three. So he was behind the line. Put another point on the board for Kentucky. So they are down only by one with 12.4 seconds to go. Kansas has the ball. Well, you know, they're going to try to steal and foul immediately. So making free throws is going to be big. But that was so close. But they got a better view than we have where they're at. But I Kansas like they made not the call. Sorry, they made the call very convincing. Yeah. Kansas has not done a good job from the line in this game. 18 of 28, and they missed three of their last four. Garrett to inbound, into Abaji. And the foul with 10.2 to go to put Abaji on the free throw line. He is two for four from the line tonight. You know what I love right now? I love the way he's walking to the line. His body language tells you a lot. It tells me, I want to get to that line. I'm going to make these. I want to get to that line. A lot of times you see guys hanging their head afraid to, oh, wow, I'm going here. The pressure, the pressure. This kid looks like he wants it. Bill Self said yesterday, we had a Zoom call with him, and he said that he feels Abachi is definitely ready to step up and lead the team. You've seen the talent. Remember, two years ago, when they uh, when they brought him in midseason, he had some great games. And you watch yeah, him play, and you say, boy, this guy looks like he's going to be a star. And Bill Self says he is ready to step into that kind of a role. Did I tell you, his body language told me he wanted to go to that line. And yeah, Dad, don't right. mention I wear Zoom again. I'm tired of Zoom. <laughs> I've Zoomed so much. I don't want to hear the Zoom. Yep. I don't want to hear the Zoom, doom, boom. Yep. Jalen uh, Wilson. All right. You want to talk about Jalen Wilson instead and his 23 yeah. points? Jalen Wilson was brilliant in the second half. Only two Jaylen points Wilson. at halftime, but has stepped up both inside with the drive and outside with the three. He's had a huge second half. Bill Self told me today he's a real good player. He's not a great, great athlete, but he's a real good player. And you're seeing it here. He's showing ability to go deep. He's showing ability to go to the basket. There he is right there, drives to the lane. Oh, great step, great move to the goal. All right, this so Dick, now win. you're Kentucky. You've got the ball, still 10 seconds to go. 
Are you looking for a three or are you trying to drive, get a quick two, and then either steal or foul, still with a few seconds left on the clock? Well, I'm looking right now. If I'm Kansas, I, even though they've shot horribly the three, I don't think I'm going to allow them to shoot the three. Percentage wise, says they're due to make one. So take some time off that clock with some pressure and then put him on a foul line. Put him on a foul, but I don't think he'll do it. There's two different ways of looking at this. Some coaches say we're going to play straight, tough, hard nosed defense. Others say we're not going to let them get an opportunity to shoot the three ball. And if you're going to do that, you want to get that clock down in about five seconds before you foul it. Yeah, still a, a fair bit of time on the clock. 10.2 seconds to go as Kentucky gets ready to inbound. I put a little Sorry. pressure on him. Yep. I put a little pressure on him. Mins for three. A little bit short. Offensive rebound taken away by Brown. He is off to the races, and Kansas will beat Kentucky 65 to 62 in a hard fought affair here in the State Farm Champions Classic. Not the prettiest game offensively, to say the least, but the Jayhawks stick with a very nice second half, led by Jalen Wilson, find a way to come up with a win. Well, you know, it was an intense battle. Both clubs with so much pride. Both coaches with a lot of pride and passion. But really, when you think about it, Jalen Wilson's not been a star of stars here in the second half. For Kentucky, growing pains. And they're going to be going through that. Shot selection, understanding how to play together and share the ball. Well, more basketball coming your way tomorrow night. The Jimmy V Classic. It'll be Gonzaga and West Virginia in the first game. And then Illinois and Baylor in the second game. A couple of games you won't want to miss. Kansas finds a way to beat Kentucky 65-62. to Coming up next, it's SVP for Dick Vitale and Holly Rowe. I'm Dan Schulman. And thanks for watching tonight. Now let's send it to our guy, SVP, with SportsCenter.